Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Place in the Sun Lives digital event. And we're doing a Friday night quiz. The first time we've tried anything like this. We just wanted to find out how many people would be interested in a quiz about the history of A Place in the Sun. And thankfully, there are at least three groups of people here who've uh, given up their time to join us and take part in tonight's event. So I think I really have to kick off with Keith and Kerry. Keith's gone all out. He's got the sequin waistcoat on. Um, Keith and Kerry, wh where are you guys? We're in North London, uh, just next to Southgate. Where's okay. Free and Barnet, where we, we live in the old mental hospital, which is quite apt, really. Right. <laughs> And you I understand you've got great plans to, um, to get yourselves out of here and get to La Belle France, is that right? La Belle France, yes. vraiment, monsieur. Yeah, we're going, we're going to, towards the end of October. We'll That's it, nice. going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. one-way ticket. Yes, one to, to um, I've worked a lot in France and uh, so... New start, fresh start. Yes. yes. And, and what's been what's been the main driver for that? Why are you uh, wanting to get yourself to France? This is a permanent move rather than a. Um... Well, because of well, because of um, Brexit, we we we've always been European. Secondly, um, the music business, because we're both musicians, has more or less come to an end. And France is a very pro dog place, and it's a good place to breed. And we know uh, uh, the same breed that we have. There's a breed down where we're moving to, which is. Southwest France. We have a Russian wolfhound. So yeah. we're hoping a that. Russian wolfhound. Okay, so you're moving to France to breed Russian wolfhounds. Exactly. How grand yes. is that? It's <laughs> very so cool. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that's fascinating. So, um, Brian and Hillary, can you can you top that? <coughs> Not really. No. Um, <laughs> we're uh, in Chatham in Kent. Um, we've had uh, every. Uh, foreign house buyer's dream for 20 years to move to Spain, eventually retire. Um, we're getting very close now, thanks to a little inheritance uh, that came last year. So we're trying to get in before uh, the Brexit deadline. Um, but that means going to Spain uh, for residency in the next uh, few months. So I don't know how that's going to pan out, but uh, uh, looking to buy in the uh, Mercia region. Uh, We've narrowed it down to uh, a couple of places, but uh, yeah, so uh, fulfilling the dream, it'll be sort of wintering over there and then coming back. Uh, we've got a business to run here, so we can't quite retire yet, but uh, that's the plan. So the plan's to get the best of both worlds. I think um, you, you, you fall into a group that's quite, quite common. Often there's a trigger like an inheritance or an approach in retirement or something like that, which just gives you the ability to... Uh, to go from thinking about it to actually uh, actually making it happen. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And Jill, you have a yeah. plan as well, I believe. Is it uh, not quite as um, proximate as these guys, but you still have a plan, don't you? No, I mean, we're looking at a sort of five to seven year plan in the next um, few years, hopefully to leave here once the house is paid off. Um, and then move somewhere to Greece. Um, no idea where yet. We need to do some wrecking of uh, the different islands and uh, see which we like and where we'd like to go. Um, I certainly will carry on working there. I'd like to have find a property that's got an annex um, or you know a, um, another area where we can um, rent it out as a holiday uh, let. So I'd, I'd just carry on working and doing that but that's the plan at the moment. So um, we we'll just have to see how it goes, really. And you've, you've spent time working overseas, I believe? Yeah, I've, um, I went away when I was 24 to Saudi Arabia. Um, I worked there for a year or so. And then since then, I've been back twice. Um, the longest stint was seven years and I came back in 2014. So I keep I keep being dragged dragged back for some strange reason, probably to do with how much money you get paid over there. Right. But, um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's all helped contribute, you know, to being able to buy a house here and you know being able to live the dream later on in life. So um, yeah, so me and my partner Mark, um, yeah, that's what we'd really like to do is to. Fantastic. Actually. We've already we've already had a message in from uh, uh, Cortine Cortine Thrussell, who is out in Hampshire. Uh, on the Hampshire Surrey border 
and um, they've already made them. Well, they have a villa in Lanzarote and they just dying to get back out there. They should have been going on Sunday, but sadly now are not big, unhappy face she sends mm. through. But anyway, that's somebody who's already gone off and uh, done what you guys are all considering. So thanks again for joining. What we thought we'd do this evening is have a bit of fun and run a quiz about the history of A Place in the Sun. It's been around quite a long time, as uh, I'm sure many of you are aware. It's a mainstay of Channel 4 broadcasting. Uh, the presenters have become legendary iconic status a number of them and uh, it's just synonymous now with the idea of owning an overseas property and has motivated a whole lot of other people to to get on and fulfill that dream so what we do in our business is we run the overseas property exhibitions uh, which obviously can't take place at the moment so we're doing this sort of thing instead and we run the website placeinthesun.com uh, the magazine a place in the sun and we also have a currency business a place in the sun currency but um, all this activity this month is taking place at the website you can see on the screen behind me, a place in the sun digital.co.uk. My colleague Katrina kindly gave me this bright orange background, which does uh, nothing for my ears. Uh, they're already rather prominent. They now look a little bit webbed and now match my toes and my fingers. So anyway, let's crack on with the quiz. So guys, pens and paper at the ready. Question one for you. No cheating, Brian. Okay. Okay. Multiple choice questions. How long does it take to film an episode of A Place in the Sun, do you think? How long does it take to film an episode? Do you think it takes three days, four days, five days, or six days? Question two, another multi-guess one. How many episodes of A Place in the Sun have there been, do you think? Most of the people on our team don't know this, so I'm going to give you some brackets to guess between. More than 500, but less than 1,000. More than 1,000, but less than 1,500. More than 1,500, but less than 2,000. And more than 2,000. So 500 to 1,000. 1,000 to 1,500. 1,500 to 2,000. And over 2,000. One of four options. Are you including repeats? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good point. The answer is no. <laughs> Original broadcasts. Yeah. No, that's about 158,000. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of repeats. It's a lot of repeats. I've seen them all as well. <laughs> that's good to hear. So in the last series that began on the 11th of August, I don't know if anybody's been watching, which of these countries has not yet been featured in an episode. So which country have you not yet seen in the new series? Bulgaria, Portugal, Malta, or France? So which one of those has there not been an episode of? Is that Bulgaria, Portugal, Malta, or France. Is that 2019 or 2020? That's the new series that just started on the 11th of August this year. Yeah. 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 Right. Bit of a, I don't think it's a trick one, but um, how many presenters are there currently? How many presenters? I won't ask you to name them all, but we might do that when we run through the answers. Are there five, six, seven, or eight? He's getting his phone out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the iPad's not working, so uh, forget it. Oh. Keith, you've got a you've got a trustworthy face. It's fine. Yes. Golly. No, I'm, I'm just trying to count on my fingers. Well, just, right. just one more, just ten seconds. Hang on. Right. <laughs> oh. I'll 
okay. Sorry about that. And Jill, you're a, you're an avid viewer, aren't you? You um you record them, don't you? Yeah, we record them every day because uh, we we miss them at the time they're on because we're both at work, so we watch them every night. Yeah, it's first first thing we watch as soon as we sit down, tea in front of us, watch Pace in the Sun. <laughs> right. Same with you, Brian and Hillary. Uh, every Sunday, catch every repeat. Watch during the week at four o'clock, even though I do run a business, I, I stop <laughs> at four o'clock and watch it. Or or on catch up, but uh, yeah, the, <clears throat> there was a recent one where we want to buy in um, La Torre, uh, where they, Ben Hillman looked at about three properties on the resort, all focused around that one resort. So yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, avid watchers, avid watchers. Yeah, Ben does a good job. Yeah, and that's where you're interested, of course, isn't it? Like that kind of area, La Torre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like he likes a loud shirt as well, does Ben? He doesn't does he? Like does, doesn't he? Does, doesn't he? I'm sort of. It looks like I've borrowed this one off him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next question. Question number five. Which presenter is the most recent addition to the team? In 2018, it was. Which presenter is the most recent addition to the team, do you think? Black. <laughs> Sorry, Silla. That chap, Andy Bridge, <laughs> Okay, another one going back into the, the dim and distant past. Which year did the first episode of A Place in the Sun air? Now, Jill actually confessed to doing some research last night and some I studying. I reckon you I reckon this is one you looked up. I think I might know the answer to that one, yeah. <laughs> you're looking you're looking rather smug. Yeah. <laughs> Google has its advantages. <laughs> it, it certainly does. That's not a trick question, is it? No. What year did the first episode uh, sorry, I should give you some options. Was it nineteen ninety eight? Two thousand? Two thousand and three? Or 2005. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. <clears throat> There's been so many names, Andy. That's that's the problem of the program. So that's why I was saying it's not a trick question. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because you've got like Winter Sun and yeah, Home and Away. Home away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It kicked off as Place in the Sun, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We're going with the we're going with the original. Question number seven, and this one is uh, not a multiple choice. What nationality is Jasmine Harmon's mother? Oh, God, I know oh, Keith knows this one. I think I do, but I'm probably wrong again. Right. Hmm. And you had a binge-worthy weekend, I hear, Jill, over the bank holiday. Is that right? Yeah, we watched about six, <laughs> six or seven episodes. Um, I can't remember what day it was. I think it was Sunday we did. Right. Yeah, we just... Um, seven. Yeah, we got loads. We just watched loads. I think lots of repeats as well, uh, Brian, that we watched. We just caught up with some that we'd not seen before. Just say so you got laid? No! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, with repeats. <laughs> I just got kicked in the leg. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Question number eight. Order. Question number eight. Laura Hamilton has an adventurous streak. Which TV show in 2014 saw her display this adventurous instinct? Laura Hamilton and her adventurous instinct. What TV show did she take part in 2014? Anybody, anybody know what um, Laura's studying for at the moment? She's actually uh, taking classes. I think they're on hold for the while, but she's been taking classes to become uh, private pilot's license. Ah. Yeah. That'd be good. Mm. She'd be able to take the crew out. 
Yeah. Save on the airfares is the yeah, plan. <laughs> Just run everybody down there. I hope a new career takes off. Oh, <laughs> dear. You can tell Keith's in showbiz. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit like um, it's a bit like uh, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden because uh, he's a pilot, isn't he? Yes. I think he, one of the uh, tours that they did several years ago, he flew them around the, yeah. did the world tours. They've got their own plane, haven't they? It's yeah. all, uh, with an eddy on the side. Yeah. yeah. And David yeah. Albon from uh, Blur, he flies as well. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Mad. After a gig, are you sure? Right. <laughs> Question number nine. Amanda Lamb appeared in a famous TV commercial for which company? There's no choice, Andy. This is way back in the day. Was it Lamb's Navy Rum? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got any choices for that one, I'm afraid, Jill. I thought you'd have been Googling that one last night. No, I did Google it, but I can't I the answer. <laughs> Brian did. <laughs> I think Brian had a team of researchers on the job. Yeah. None of this information. <laughs> we didn't even know what the quiz was about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very worried about your left ear. It's kind of doing all this. <laughs> Don't worry, the second half is about, uh, what are they, Russian wolfhounds in France. Oh, we're all right. <laughs> having a great time whatever thank you <laughs> okay and it's good to see we have um people watching at home uh, like yourselves who've joined in so i hope you're all keeping the score on uh, these questions as well uh let's see how you do it against the teams we've got here on screen right moving on question number 10 this is which country was the number one country for people for British people buying property in Spain. Ah, <laughs> ah, thank you. Okay. Do you want to go for a region in Spain? Can, can you tell? Can you tell that I'm new to this? Yeah. Can you tell that I'm new to this? Which which was the most popular country for British people buying property in 2019? <laughs> Well, you've is given it us one point, haven't you? Is it France, Cyprus, Malta, or Spain? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Andy. Okay. Well, we got one point. Anyway. I was going to say yeah, he's got so one now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. How would you best translate Costa Brava? How does Costa Brava in the north of Spain best translate? Is it the Golden Coast, the Brave Coast, or the Wild Coast? Costa Brava, Golden Coast, Brave Coast, or Wild Coast? Keith's been studying French, but he hasn't got round to his Spanish just yet. Ah, sí, de verdad. Multilingual. Pues seguimos en español si quieres. One day we'll be able to. Another question about Spain. Which is the largest Canary Island? Is it Tenerife? Lanzarote, Gran Canaria, or La Gomera? The largest Canary Island. Tenerife, Lanzarote, Gran Canaria, or La Gomera? 17 autonomous regions in Spain. The Canary Islands is one of those autonomous regions, which is the largest Canary Island. Question number 13, which is the largest island in the Mediterranean? Is it Sicily, Sardinia, or Santorini? Largest island in the Med, Sicily, Sardinia, Santorini.
Okay. Another island question, which is further north? This is, this is difficult. A colleague picked this one. Which is further north, Corsica or Sardinia? Which is further north, Corsica or Sardinia? Gone all geography. Well, yeah, they we, they have got a little bit um, clearly more ge geography based than just a TV show. Yeah, I think I've been to most of them, but I can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember whether you've been or which was further north. <laughs> <laughs> Where they are. You, you must have had a really good time. Well, I worked on the cruise ships, and, and back in the day, yeah, it was, it was a bit more easy going than it is these days. Um, right. And there was lots of alcohol involved. So, um, yeah. <laughs> what, what's um, it like working on a cruise ship then? Is it is it all good fun or is it pretty hard work as well? Um, it, it was really hard work, Andy. Yeah. We, I mean, some days we used to work 18 hours a day and you'd work that for seven days a week. Yeah, for six wow. months with no days off. So, yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't um, as easy as people thought. I think it's a lot easier now because this was like back in the nineties. But but you worked hard and you played hard. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was good fun. And your line of business, Keith and Kerry, that's uh, that's difficult at the moment. I understand. Obviously, there's not much of a live music scene right now. No, there's there's well, obviously not because you can't you know can't be social close distancing, to social yeah. distancing. We went to a little gig in a park near here, but everyone was spaced out. I mean, I don't see how it can recover for, for a while. Not, not for a number of years. Mm. I, I, can't see I, don't, I don't see what can happen. No. Mind mm. you, in Denmark and Sweden, they're just not bothering, and they're, they're all mostly doing very well. Yeah, it's been yeah. all right up there, yeah. I, different different sort of strategy, yeah. And you were you said you were, at the, um, you were working at Mamma Mia before lockdown, were you? Yeah, I, I actually... Uh, a little while previously, I, I did leave, but I'd been working there for a long time. And the, and the guy who took over me for it's a bit younger and kids, and you know, it's hard. There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. Playing there. playing which instrument? Guitar. Guitar. Yeah, yeah, that's my main instrument. Though I play right. Harmonica as well. And you sing, do you, Kerry? I sing, yeah, I sing, and we we and Keith sings, and we I do BBs for him, and I do. I'm on my second album now, and. Um, and he's, wow. That he's, he's on yeah. the as well, isn't he? Yeah. And we just so you'll, you'll, be, you'll be hitting the music scene in France then when you get down there? Yeah. Well, Keith's worked with a very famous uh, French artist called Veronique Sanson, which you won't have heard of, but she's massive out there. Right. I've got me connections over there, you know, so I'm hoping for something, yeah. That's the French connection. Hey! hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did me up. Right. There. Let's move on. Yeah. Brilliant. This one's quite pertinent to you guys anyway. The Pyrenees Mountains, the Pyrenees, they separate France from which country? The Pyrenees separate France from which country? Question number 16. Okay, let's... Let's just take a look at these. Wow. This is our picture round. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So, what do you reckon? Italy or Cyprus? Which do you think it is? Italy or Cyprus. Looks lovely, doesn't it? You can see yourself there, just sat at a little cafe with a coffee in the morning or whatever. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it certainly does. Okay, question number 17, another picture question. Where is this? Do you think that's Portugal or Spain? Mm 
Often hard to tell apart, really. Um, share the Iberian Peninsula, obviously, lots of whitewashed villages in both. But um, where do you think that is? Do you think that's Portugal or Spain? It's a shame. Mm. So, you know, when we go down. Yeah. Next one, question number 18. I like this one. Mallorca or Menorca? Hillary's got that one right away. Yeah. Mallorca or Menorca? And what, what line of business are, are, are you guys in, Brian and Hillary? Uh, so we've got a purpose made joinery business. We make stairs and uh, fitted furniture. Um, we thankfully weren't too badly affected by COVID. It was a bit scary at first. We, were, we had to shut down for eight weeks. Luckily, the furlough scheme worked for us. Um, uh, yeah, and we've been back and, you know... <laughs> You, you're either busy or you're not, and we are thankfully very busy at the moment. So, yes, uh, it's good at the moment. So, but you just dread the second spike coming, and uh, who knows? But um, yeah, no, so uh, good at the moment. Doing is it so? Is it mainly domestic work, or is it um, commercial? Yeah, I'd say ninety percent domestic. Although the weird one we have at the moment is because of Brexit, we are doing the pet reception at Eurotunnel. The pet reception? Yes. <laughs> wow. wow, so the Russian dogs will be going, <laughs> going through. Well, we've had to design a desk, uh, design and wear fabrica in the... Uh, Euro tunnel. Uh, in the process of manufacturing the desk that you'll have to check your pets in to go abroad after Brexit. Mm, wow. How interesting. Mm. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, but yeah. Yeah, so we do a bit of commercial work, but mainly domestic, yeah. Right, okay. Staying with pictures, here we go again. Where is this one? This is a tough one, I think. Oh. USA, or is it Spain? Oh. Is this the good old US, or is it Spain? Just on balance, I think. Beach. And the last one, where do you think this is? Do you think this is Italy or do you think this is Austria? Is that it then? Question. Yeah. That's the 20. Mm. <coughs> Need to see any of those again, or are we all good? No, good. 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 All good. Yeah. Ah, there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Now, Hello. Hello, Amanda. This is our, our wonderful mystery guest. It's Amanda <laughs> Lamb. How are you? Sorry, have I let you all down? Were you expecting Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. You're looking Trey Glam. Where have you been, oh, or where? Are you <laughs> Well, do say hello. You've got you've got Brian and Hillary. Hi, we have Brian, Hillary. Hi. And we have Keith and Kerry. And Keith's obviously made an effort too in his uh, sequin waistcoat. You'll be pleased Hi, to see. Hi, Keith. How are you doing? Very well. How are you? Good. I'm very well. Well, yeah, very spangly. Very lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to make the effort. Please, it's please. close in the sun, you know. So, so what's, what's your news, Amanda? I um, some, some TV work going on at the moment. I am, yeah. I'm in the middle of... Um, filming a new series for the Discovery Channel called My Mortgage Free Home, um, where we are helping people um, 
use the equity in their homes to live mortgage free, which has been really exciting. Actually, we've we've had some crackers. We were in Hearn Bay at the weekend. I don't know whether oh, you lovely. Any yeah. of you guys have been there before, but oh my god, this beautiful Edwardian six bedroomed house for. 450,000 detached wow. huge yes so we've been having a very lovely time doing that but there's lots of traveling but um it's good fun and it's all in this country i'm trying to get them to do it abroad for next year you see that's my plan oh, my you are, yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about protocols around filming then at the moment does it make it all quite difficult and awkward or is it fine have you got have you got into a into a yeah. process there are a few things like um we have to wipe down all the houses after we've been to all the door handles and you know doorknobs and banisters and rails and things like that of course the crew have to wear masks um i have to stand two meters apart from the contributors which actually makes it quite difficult to kind of have any kind of dialogue with anyone um yeah but the, the a lot of channels um won't show shows now if it looks like you're too close together so everyone's very panicked about that because if you film a, a program and um and you're not two meters apart, the channel won't put it out. So we have to be quite careful with that. But other than that, it's it's pretty it's pretty okay. It's not too bad. Right. Oh well, it's great that you're back filming. That's so exciting. And when are they planned to be broadcast? Do you know? Or? Uh, it's soon, October the twelfth. Oh so, wow! Yeah. How exciting! I haven't shot it yet. We don't finish shooting it until the twenty sixth of um, September. So it's gonna it's gonna be a quick turnaround, but it's gonna be good fun. I'm looking forward to Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do now... Questions hard. How many rounds have you done? We have done uh, 20 questions. Okay. And we've been through them, about 12, 10 or 12 of them, about the TV show, number of episodes, first date aired, um, TV commercial that you were famous for, don't say it, <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. And then we did, a load of, uh, we did a load of geography questions as well. So... Hard. We've now come to our final round, which is our truth or lie with Amanda Lamb. Yes, and I have. Which we're terribly excited about. So, <laughs> well, how this is going to work. This is going to work. That, um, I want to ask you. Can I yeah, just gonna... Amanda, Amanda, were you in the trip? The trip? With Steve Coogan. Oh, I just made a film. No. Oh, was that a question? Oh, I hope not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Carry on, move on, sorry. Can I just say one thing very quickly? When I sent Andy my actual true statements, he sent me a, a WhatsApp back going, are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely, I was, um, I was bowled over by them. So uh, I can actually share them with everybody here. So let's all take a look at these and see what you make of these. Do you want me to read them out or are you going so to? No. The idea here is, yeah, Amanda, that um, you just read each one, each one of them out and then we're going to give each of the teams an opportunity to ask you about one of the one of the statements. So why don't you just read them out for us first, please, Amanda? I've not said hello. Is that Jill at the bottom of there? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, how are you? You're all right, Amanda. Yeah. Thank Jill, you. Jill's on. Jill's on the vodka, Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> I am on the vodka. <laughs> it's been a long week. All right. I will read out my. I'll read out the statements. Um. All right. Statement number one. My chemistry teacher sent me home for turning the Bunsen burner on him. I once got run over by a nun in a brown mini. At an illegal rave in South Central LA, I accidentally trod on Bjork's foot. I once got into an argument with a woman who tried to get into a taxi that I'd flagged down, only to find out that it was Helen Mirren. I almost broke my coccyx falling off Prince's toilet and I am terrified of frogs. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, Jill, we're going to start with you. So pick one of those, and you've just got a, a minute or so to, to quiz Amanda and see if you can find any holes in the truth or the lie. Oh, crikey. Um, so what were you doing at an illegal rave in South Central LA? Um, I went with a group of friends. So when I was 18, I worked as a nanny in um, Laguna Beach, uh, okay. south of um, near Huntington Beach and in between Huntington and San Diego. And there were a group of other nannies that that lived in the sort of community that I was in. 
and they all said let's go to this this party a friend of ours has told us about it and it was just after I don't know whether you remember, but the riots that happened in South Central LA, I mean, my mother would have a fit if she knew what was going on, but we all drove there and it was this dark, dingy, horrid little place. I just wanted to go home. I thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> anyway, it was really dark. It was really noisy. Um, it was about four in the morning. So I was really tired and I stepped back and I trod on this person's foot and I turned around and thought I'd she's so to Bjork's tiny she's about I don't know four foot eleven uh, five foot maximum so she's about here on me because I'm nearly six foot and I didn't realize who it was until um one of my friends said to me that was Bjork you do oh, you know know. Bjork's foot. so that's what happened okay thank you one and only rave I would never <laughs> go again <laughs> Okay, so you guys have to decide whether you're buying that one or not. The pointing, the point system for this one is you're going to get a point for every one you get correct, but you're going to lose a point for each one you get wrong. Okay, Brian and Hillary. I know it's tough, isn't it, Amanda? Brian and Hillary, which question would you like to explore? Which statement would you like to explore with Amanda? Well, just out of interest, why was a nun wearing a miniskirt? <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Is that the one you want me to talk about? Well, let, let's go with that one, Amanda, yeah. <laughs> Andy's actually taken out. Um, well, okay, so basically when I was about... Go for it. Oh, gosh, let me think. I would have been about... I was in junior school, so I would have been about nine or ten at the time. And there used to be a convent at the end of our road. And I was walking home from school on one side of the road with my friend, Sarah. And on the other side of the road were several other friends of ours. And she said to me, why don't you go over and see Teresa and she pushed me into the road and as she pushed me there was this little old brown mini I mean it was I'm talking probably 1980 81 here and she pushed me into the road and I sort of had that split second of do I do I run back do I keep running forward so I ran forward but as I ran forward and sort of dived into the the grassy bankment that the um the mini hit me or hit the back of my legs and um it sort of screeched to a halt and out got a nun in a full habit and um she took me home where i got looked after by my mum but the funniest bit of that story i have to tell this bit as well is that my mum used to work for tam brands the tampon fa factory <laughs> So until I was 16, I didn't realise what Tampax were actually for. We used them as cotton wool. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was bleeding quite badly. And so my mum went and got about eight tampons and soaked them in salt water and stuck them to the back of my leg. But it was only when I grew up that I actually realised what those things were for. You know, we used them as Christmas decorations, stop nose bleed. <laughs> If you're making that up, that is a vivid imagination. That's all I can say. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, Keith and Kerry, you have your stab. Pick one of those remaining statements, please. So how come you you turn you turn the Bunsen burner on your chemistry? How, how what happened? Your chemistry? Oh, well, I had a chemistry teacher when I was about 14 who I really didn't like very much at all. Um he made me sit at the front of the class for talking. I mean, God, awful. I don't know where he went. <laughs> so I had to sit at the front and we were doing an experiment one day and chemistry and science was, were not my strong points at school. And he said something, sort of muttered something about, well, first of all, he, he kind of he belittled me in front of the whole class and I'd done something and I hadn't done it right. So he kind of sort of, you know, for goodness sake, lamb, you know, how many times do we have to go through this? So it made me feel really small. And um, as he was walking away from, from where I was standing, I picked the thing up and kind of sort of waved it at him. Um, luckily, he didn't turn around and I didn't get caught. Um, but he, he then walked to the back of the class and the girl that I really didn't like shot her hand up and said, excuse me, Mr. Smith, but you know that um, Mandy, that was what they used to call me at school, Mandy Lambs just, just waved her bumps and burner at you. And he came back to the top of the class and sort of said to me, you know, is that true? And um, apart from now, I've never been very good at lying. So I just went bright red and said, yes, sir. And I got sent home. It's the only time I've ever been sent home from school. There's one of those in every class, though, isn't there? One that the hand goes up and dobs you in? Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> no, and in the same class, my best friend called her hair a light of the Bunsen burner. It was the, it was the decade of perms and hairsprays. Um, <laughs> so that oh, went up. Yeah. Not, we really shouldn't have been allowed in there, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's great. Thank you, Amanda. So for each of those statements, there are six of them, guys. You just put truth or lie next to each of those. And we're going to run through those answers first before we do the rest. So uh, Amanda can, can crack on with her evening. Is so, there three, three of each? Is three true and we're three? not telling you. We're not telling oh, you. Right. Oh, right. Some, right. some of them are true <laughs> and some of them are lies. That's so mean. It's a tough gig here we run. Oh, I tell you, you really are tough. I'm just grabbing some water, excuse me. I'm not on the vodka yet, John. <laughs> <laughs> and was it was it Willow's first day today? Is that was the um, new school or? It was, yeah, brand new school, secondary school today. So it's like, wow. I've got a child in secondary school and then Lottie starts on Monday. So. Right. Yeah. So it's That's really a major moment, isn't it? Rites of passage, secondary school. Yeah, it was, it was really, yeah, it was, it was like, there's my little baby and she's all grown up now and <laughs> wanted me to come and meet her. And then when I got there to meet her, she was like, can you walk behind me, mum? Because I'm going to walk behind me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And she's, so she's probably eyeing up how long the cable is on the Bunsen burner right now and see if she can awesome. burn tomorrow. Who on earth would think would put 13 year olds in charge of um, Bunsen burners? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, guys, so have you got the truth or lie next to each of those? So, Amanda, why don't you do the reveal, if you won't mind running through those for us and saying them again and then saying whether it's true or false for us. Okay, so um, number, statement A, my chemistry teacher sent me home for turning the Bunsen burner on him, is in fact false. I once got run over by a nun in a brown mini, is true. At an illegal rave in South Central LA, I accidentally trod on Bjork's foot. True. <laughs> I got into an argument with a woman who tried to get in a taxi I'd flagged down only to find out that it was Helen Mirren. Is false. I almost broke my coccyx falling off Prince's toilet. Who put true down for that one? Oh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Is it? Oh! <laughs> We want the story, really. We quick. really want that story. We absolutely want that story. When I was filming A Place in the Sun, we went to Prince's house in Marbella. He used to have a mansion at the top of the hills in Marbella that he shared with his wife. And we were doing a, not million pounds special, but we were looking at luxury houses. So we were allowed access to this house. And Prince had everything custom built. So all of his worktops, um, were like a very uh, soft purple marble. Um, he had purple satin bed sheets and a mirror above a four poster bed. I mean, you know, I, this is not, <laughs> isn't it? You don't want him to have a single bed with like a cat kids and duvet cover on it. It was sort of purple, purple satin sheets, but everything was lower down because he was small, oh, yeah, wasn't he? Because he was five oh, foot, wasn't he? So worktops, um, he had a purple oh, barbecue yeah. as well, w was all a good kind of, that much lower than a conventional, no. yeah. So obviously I thought, I've got to go and have a wee in Prince's loo. <laughs> so I went into the bathroom, sat down on the toilet. Um, but you know when you sit, you, you kind of, you just do it instinctively because you know how big, how tall a toilet is. Well, back. His toilet was so much lower. Oh, no. I sat on it, I hit the <gasps> coccyx um, on the back of the seat wow. and, and it, the pain was quite... Oh my goodness. Yes, but it was an amazing house. He had this huge, I guess, probably 20 foot picture of him naked from, from the waist up. That you didn't see anything, but just this huge poster of himself at the top of his stairs. It was exactly what you'd like a rock star's house to, to look yeah. like. Um, <laughs> and then the last question, I'm terrified of frogs, is true. Okay. Ooh. Well, what a great story that is about Prince's, uh, Prince's yes. Villa in Marbella. Wonderful yes. stuff. Yes, he was great. Amanda, thank you very much for giving up your time this evening. It's thank lovely you. to see you. you we wish you well with the rest of your filming <laughs> and look forward to seeing that uh, when it is broadcast next month. I shall look forward to catching up with you soon, Andy. Take care. Okay. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Bye. 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 I don't know how to get rid of you all. How do I do that? Oh, I'll leave, don't <laughs> 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 okay and we're all back on 
on screen. Okay, that was fun. Well done, guys. Let's run through these answers now. So for that round, if you just give your plus one and minus one for each of those you got right or wrong, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll just check those at the end. So question number one, Brian and Hillary, how long do you think it takes to film an episode of A Place in the Sun? Six days. It's actually five days. Uh, five. five days. You did that first of all. <laughs> and Jill, your best guess for the number of episodes since launch? I put 100 like, to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,500, 1,500 to 2,000, or over 2,000? I put 500 to 1,000. Any increase on that? That's what we got. Over 2,000. Over 2,000. It's actually 15, it's about high 1600s at the last count. Yeah. So. 1500, 1500 to 2000. Well, that's swatting on Wikipedia was yeah, a waste of time is, then. It's wrong. <laughs> yeah. You've done what we did. <laughs> <laughs> We've got lots, lots of comments coming in on the chat. Uh, another one from Cortine saying that Amanda's a good liar. Uh, yeah, she got two, yeah. two out of her six, and John, her hubby, only got one out of six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she has got some good stories indeed. Okay, next one. Where have we not been? Keith and Kerry, which country do you think has not been featured in the most recent issue, uh, recent series? I put Bulgaria. Yeah, I put Bulgaria as well. Portugal. I thought Ben had been to Bulgaria. Actually, Johnny was in Bulgaria Johnny. with a lady who ah. bought in rural Bulgaria. Yeah, it's actually Portugal. Okay. Yes. Oh, I, see, I see Keith and Kerry is split into two teams now. Keith won that one because he put Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember Johnny doing the Portugal, the uh, Bulgaria one. The yeah. Bulgaria one, yeah. That was interesting. That was really cool. But she never listens to me, so that's <laughs> not changed there. Jill, how many presenters? Six. No, more. Brian? Seven. It's seven. Yeah. Go on, Brian. Yeah, this is your moment. Yeah. Run through them all for us. Name them. Uh, Jasmine, Johnny, Ben, Jean, uh, Laura, Danny, Laura. Menzies, and yeah. Laura Hamlin. And Scarlett. I think you just missed Scarlett. Yeah, Scarlett. Yeah, and Scarlett. yeah, we got seven there. Which presenter, um, staying with you, Brian and Henry, is the most recent addition to the team? Jean Johansson. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I got one right, I left. Well done. Well done. The fog is kicking in. <laughs> and Kerry, Kerry and Keith, which year did the first episode air? 2005. 2000. Yep. 2000. It's actually 2000. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Got that one wrong. The first first series first episode was two thousand, and then the magazine came along in two thousand and four. Is that right? Yeah. And then the ex first exhibition was two thousand and five, and we've been doing the uh, the magazine and the exhibitions ever since. And then more recently, about eight years ago, the website. Jill, what nationality is Jasmine Harmon's mother? I'm not sure. I put Greek, but I, I don't know if that's right. You, you can have that. She's Greek Cypriot. Oh, yes. yeah, we yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Greek Cypriot. We, we did enrol at her gym. Well done. Brian, Hillary, Brian, uh, Laura's Adventurous Street. What TV show do you think she was on? I think it was The Jump. Yeah, I'll put that. What's The Jump? It was The Jump where they, it was a winter sports show where she went down a ski jump. Mm. I think it was actually only about six weeks after she'd had a child as well. So, um, wow, wow. Pretty, she's made of she's made of stern stuff. I put cracker jack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The TV advert then, Jill, that Amanda Lamb appeared in. Do you know that one? I don't know. Brian, Scottish widows. Scottish Widows. Oh, it was the Scottish oh. Widows. That was the iconic one with the cape, where she yeah. swirled around with the cape yeah, yeah. around the head. I didn't know that was her. That was Amanda's first, um, first, 
first claim to fame, or one of her first claim to fame. Right, we're getting into our tricky geography round now. Anybody get number 10 right? Which country was most popular for British people buying? That'd be Spain, oh, Portugal. That, that, <laughs> that would be Spain. That would be Spain. British people buy more property in Spain than any other non-Spanish nationality, than most, uh, the, the largest number of properties bought in Spain are by, uh, by Brits, after Spaniards, of course. Brian and Hillary, how does Costa Brava best translate, do you think? Well, it's definitely coast, and I just went with Brava, brave. What about you, Keith and Kerry? Wild. wild coast. It's the wild coast. Yeah, yeah. Apple wild. Yeah. They have a place there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crosses. Jill, the largest Canary Island, which do you think that is? I put Tenerife. You would be right. Tenerife oh. is correct. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Kerry. <laughs> and which is the largest island in the Med, Brian and Hillary? I think it's Sicily. You think correctly. That is right. Well done. Oh, Very good. Kerry got that one. With that, we were a team again. I couldn't remember. Yeah. They're both very similar. Yep. Yeah. So which one's further north then, Jill? Corsica or Sardinia? 50-50, which way did he go? Corsica, I don't know. Of Corsica it is, yes, is it? that's oh, correct. Yes. Oh, yes. Keith was just warming up for that one, weren't you? <laughs> and staying with you, Keith and Kerry then, this is where you're gonna be, you're, you're moving down that way. Is it? Is it to Po that you're thinking of going? Very close there, yeah, yeah. Close to there, okay. So the, Pyr the Pyrenees separate France from which country? Spain. From Spain, absolutely. Well done. Job back coming up after that. Well, they, they only separate a bit. <laughs> it's true. It's enough. It's enough, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so these, this picture round that we had, let's see if we can bring those back up again. Uh, they're quite lovely places to look at. So the first one of those that I showed you, oh, where are we? This one, Italy or Cyprus? Which did you go with, Jill? Italy. It's actually Cyprus. Yay! Oh. I thought it was St. <laughs> Paul's like as well, Jill. It's the, um, it's the, like the view of the port in Carina. Ah. Not been there, so I don't know. No. Okay. A turquoise dye factory. Here. Yeah, it looks beautiful. And what about this one then, uh, Brian and Hillary? Spain or uh, Portugal? Well, it was a toss-up. It looks like the beach when you go down through the tunnel in the old town in um, Albufeira. So we went Portugal. It's Albufeira. Well done. Yeah. We got it. Woo. You did as well. Excellent. I got that too. Said that the architecture. Yeah. Full house from yeah. that one. Excellent. Well done. Yeah. Good knowledge there, Brian. And Thank you. And Hillary, very well done. And this one, what do we think, Jill? Mallorca or Menorca? Mallorca. It's, it's Mallorca, indeed. Palmer, isn't it? Palmer, yeah. yeah. Palmer, that absolutely stunning cathedral. If you've ever been in there, it's amazing. Yeah, been lots of times. Yeah, been there once. Amazing. And that is Sunderland Beach. <laughs> Sunderland, correct. <laughs> Keith, where do you think this is? USA or Spain? Spain. It actually is Spain, unbelievably. Yeah. Wow. Because it's where they did spaghetti westerns and all that, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's called Las Bardenas Reales. It's a desert. Bardenas Reales. Yeah. yeah, it Reales is. And the final one. Brian and Hillary, what did you make of this one? Austria or Italy? Well, it has to be Austrian Alps, surely. Well, it does have to be, which is why it's not. It's Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a trick, wasn't it? That one. Yeah, yeah. A, colleague, a colleague slipped that one in, and I said no, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain that's Austria. And it turns it's out not, it's not, not like really an the houses aren't really Austrian; they're different. It, but it's it's in the Alps. It's actually the Dolomites. Yeah, but houses are different. But it's yeah, you think you're in. 
somewhere else in Australia. Yeah, yeah. looks 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 lush and beautiful anyway. But yeah, that is the Dolomite Dolomites rather than history. Austria, obviously not too far away, but um, yeah, it is Italy, right? How about you guys can just tot up your totals? Brian's looks like Brian and Hillary look like they've already done that. Yeah. Yeah. One off. Yeah. Keith and Kerry need a, a, a calculator. It's such a big total. They're going to be working through their numbers slowly. <laughs> Jill, Jill looks like she's added up her numbers. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Brian told me how many he was going to get before we even started this evening's event. So um, we know he's got he's got top scores. <laughs> he's, he's disappeared. He's gone, has he? He's gone to hang his head in shame. Andy, Andy I just clarify. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not too sad about it. <clears throat> Andy, can I just clarify? Every, every other score is just one. If you just one. No, if you get it wrong, it's just yeah. six where you you Three subtract. Points. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two there. Okay. Another message from uh, from Cortine. Uh, it's good that people are playing at home. She's, uh, she's made up because she got 15 and uh, hubby John only got 10. So <laughs> bragging rights in that household this weekend go to Cortine. Cara Robinson has messaged in. She's happy with her score of 14. Uh, that's a good score. And let's go around the houses here. Let's start again with you, Jill. How many did you get? I got 19. You got 19, Jill? Yeah, I got oh. all the Amanda ones right. Which I was really shocked about. You got all the Amanda ones right? Yeah. All six? Yeah. Brilliant. Wow. What with that and all your studying last night, that's really put you in a strong position. Yeah. Beats us. Okay. We've got somebody here who's just chipping in. Moya. Moya Mahoney. We got 21. She beat me. You got 21. Moya, well done. That was good going. Brian and Hillary, what about your good selves? Right. So we got Oh, here we go. Out We've got four out of the six on the uh, truth, or, truth or Lie, so that's yeah. two, yeah? Yes. Is that two? We got that. Yes, that's two. Uh, do you know what? I'll give you four. I'll give you four for that, because it seems a bit harsh. I'll give you four. Right. So if that was four, we got 17 then. You got 17. Great. Well done, you guys. Thank and you. Keith and Kerry. Uh, Keith, you're probably going to do a drum roll now, are you, given the line of work you're in? <laughs> <laughs> we got 22. Woo! 22. Really? Oh, it's, all on. it's all on here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's plain as day there. <laughs> well, that, it, was, it was 20, but then you added the extra two because we got four of the six. Well, okay. You, you, you played your cards very close to your chest there because it looked like you were, you know, struggling, exasperated and not scoring anything. <laughs> but actually, a bit of dark horse, you two. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well uh, done, Kerry. Yes, we have. All right, we were good. I can't believe that, actually. But, uh, right. Um, we're, we would hand out prizes, but, you know, it's a bit tricky virtually. But yeah. um, it's been right. really good fun. I've, been uh, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. It's been... Uh, Really champagne to everyone. Yeah, oh, you've got, got nice champagne glasses there. <laughs> yeah, it's empty, but that's not a problem. It's my black currant and what is it? Uh, Elderflower. Elderflower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very posh. Very posh. That's yeah. good. It's and, normally Coke. <laughs> and that's uh, Steve, Stephen Needs has got 18. Uh, Car has just been, been saying it's been great. Thank you all very much. Um, it has been good fun. I've enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah. I hope yeah, you guys have. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you for inviting us. It's been really, really good. Thank you. No, we really appreciate your time. It's been uh, it's been a hoot. So um, it's actually all recorded as well. So uh, oh, probably on Monday, you. it'll be up on our website. So you can you can ping the link round to all your friends and families. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so it's goodbye from the winners. Yeah. Oh, that's us. Hey! <laughs> You're all winners, all winners. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye, Andy. guys. Thanks, Thank Andy. Thanks, Andy. Bye. 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 Have a good weekend. And you. All the best in France. All the best. I hope it works out for you. Yes, it will. Get, get in touch and let us know how you get on. I've been talking to Joanna Leggett today. You have done? Yes. She's Excellent. Fantastic. Yep. Not.
Tottenham. Fantastic. Okay, that's great. Yeah. All the best to you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Fun, <laughs>